Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thanks to God. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast. I'm so blessed, privileged, honored, and highly favored to have this another opportunity to come and speak life, hope, inspiration, and empowerment to each of you today. We're so blessed to have those of you who have gathered with us today for our fellowship here in paradise. Pray that you have been enriched. We've certainly been blessed by your presence and, and the fellowship of the Spirit that God has allowed us to participate in. And so to those who are gathered here, as well as those who are in our listening audience, today we're going to speak a message entitled, God's Design for Our Lives. God's Design for Our Lives. For God has a plan, a purpose in mind for each and every one of us, children of God. There's a scripture from the Old Testament, I believe from the book of Jeremiah, that says, Before there was in the mother's womb, I knew you. And that means that God knows exactly what he has purposed in his heart and mind for us to accomplish in the earth. And we want his will to be revealed to us so that we can know how to walk in that good, that perfect, that acceptable will of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's think about that today as we tune in to this week's message and as we ponder uh, the subject matter. Ask yourself, what is God's design for my life? What is God's design for my life? And if you already know the answer or have an idea, the second question you can ask yourself is, am I living God's design for my life? Hallelujah. And so uh, there are several scriptures that come to mind, both Old and New Testament. One that's particularly in my mind now is the story of Gideon in the Old Testament text in the book of Judges, where Gideon and the people of Israel were under constant attack of invading enemies. And the enemies would always come during their harvest time. It will always come at the season when they're about to reap the fruit of their labor. And so the enemy with time is raised into uh, the children of Israel's life during that season. So much so that Gideon and the people began to hide themselves behind walls and hide some of the harvest behind walls so that the enemy could not see that they had in fact gathered the harvest. Scripture says that he would toss the uh, grain and the wheat up in the air and the wind would take the wheat away, the grain away, and the wheat would fall back in a basket. And so that was a constant uh, situation uh, that they were living under, a constant situation of fear. And it was in that moment, in one of these moments, when God spoke to Gideon and says, You mighty man of value. Now, of course, I just described to you uh, Gideon's attitude as well as the people who were being invaded. They were afraid of the enemy. In fact, as I mentioned, Gideon was hiding behind a wall so the enemy would not see him. But God had a design for Gideon's life. He says, you mighty man of valor. You see, God sees us according to his plan, not our plan. God sees us according to his will, not our will. God sees our, us in our circumstances beyond our circumstances. And, the, and this was true in the life of Gideon just as well as it's true in our lives today. Each and every one of us were born with a purpose in mind. God had something in mind when he created you, when God allowed you to survive the womb of your mother, allowed you to be a viable birth in this earth, allowing you to have your faculties and abilities and intellect and will and emotions and your senses of your body. God designed you with a purpose in mind. And so it's very important for us, just as we see in this a story I was telling you about in Gideon. Let me see if I can find you a scripture reference for it so you can uh, look it up for yourself. I may not have a chance to um, read it, 
but I want you to be able to look at that portion of scripture. And in fact, I'm going to find that scripture now so that you can have a reference for it. Praise God. Someone say with me, God has a design for my life. Yes. And now it's a matter of us if we don't know that design. And, and, the, and the design that God has is, is usually not giving all at once. It, he unfolds it to us as we obey the unction and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so we, we must be responding to the, to the, to the, to the, the leading of the Holy Spirit in order for us to prove that we're, we're going to obey God because blessings always follow obedience. Now here is the scripture I want to give you, children of God. Judges chapter 6, verse 12. It reads, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of value. The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of value. We see that God identified the characteristics that he had placed inside of Gideon in spite of his present circumstance and situation. In spite of his fear of the enemy, God had placed value in him. So Gideon even questioned the statement, almost as if you were standing with someone and you mention something about that person and they look around to see if you're talking about someone else. That's kind of the response that the scriptures uh, suggest that Gideon had. So at that time that God spoke to us about Gideon, he wasn't living up to that, not at that moment, because he was having trouble believing God was with him because he was so discouraged because of the suffering of his people. And some of you may be going through a becoming stage of who God says you are. And that's why I want to remind you or to plant inside your spirit today that you understand that no matter where you find yourself now, God has a design for your life. Hallelujah. Another text in the Old Testament that we're probably familiar with is Jeremiah, I believe it's 29, 11, for God says, I know the plans that I have for your life. Also, we know the New Testament text that God had a design for Peter's life. There are often times where Peter uh, struggled with his emotions. There were, he was quick to respond emotionally to situations and circumstances around his life. One instance was when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane praying and then Judas came with the Roman soldiers to arrest Jesus. And it says that Peter cut one of the centurion servant soldiers ears off. And Jesus told him to put his sword away. In fact, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, for you want to do the things that please man, but not the things that please God. So we see two designs at work in that particular example of scripture. First, Jesus knew that God, his father, had a design and purpose for his arrest. He knew that he must suffer and die for the forgiveness of our sins. So just as we talked about getting in the Old Testament, where the Lord spoke to him and says, you mighty man of value, Jesus had prayed in the garden that evening, asking if this cup be too heavy for me, then remove it from me. But finally, he concluded, nevertheless, not my will, but let thine will be done. In other words, guys, I know you have a design and purpose in mind for everything that I'm about to go through. And even though Peter at this time was quick to respond emotionally, Jesus knew that God had a purpose and design for his life too. We find out later, after Jesus was resurrected, he came to Peter and he, and he says to Peter that Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. What do you think Jesus prayed for Peter? He says I, he prayed for him that when he is converted, that he will strengthen his brethren. That's God's design for Peter's life in spite of how his current attitude and emotions were so out of whack. So children of God, listen. 
God doesn't look for your perfections. He sees our imperfections so he can lead us and guide us into the perfect will of God as he has designed us. You see, there are, there are things in life that we have to be prepared for. Sometimes life situations and circumstances shape us for things that we cannot understand right now. But as the examples that we've given you about getting in about Peter, and we even see that Jesus was aware of God's design and purpose for his life and his death, it is important for each of us to realize that we also are a part of God's design in the earth. It may manifest differently to each and every one of us, but it's all for the same purpose, that we may glorify God through our words, actions, attitudes, and behavior. We should be that light that Jesus talked about in the dark world. We should be the salt of the earth that, that, that calls things not to decay into spiritual, emotional, or moral spirals and, 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 and defeat. In general, we as the body of Christ have that purpose and God has designed the body and placed each, every one of us as a living stone in this temple, which is the body of Christ. Jesus has imparted his spirit into us. He's given it to us. Or at least he has sent the Holy Spirit to our lives. There were two texts of scripture, one Old and one New Testament. Joel chapter 2 talked about in the latter days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Both men and women, I will pour out my spirit upon them. And we see in Acts chapter 2 the manifestation of that purpose and that design in God's life. And so all throughout the book of Acts, I always use the book of Acts, particularly chapter 2, which is the founding of the church, so to speak. It is the time that where, where the disciples and the apostles were equipped with God's spirit, with God's power, God's anointing. For we knew that jo Joel prophesied it in the Old Testament, the purpose and the design that will be manifested once the Holy Spirit has come upon us. And in Acts chapter 2, we see the fulfillment and manifestation and the outworking of that. And that is a continuing journey throughout generation to generation of believers even today. Because that is God's design for the church. He says, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we are created to be a victorious church. And in order to be victorious, it means that we have to overcome some things. We have to face some things. We have to conquer some things. Paul says to the Roman church that ye are more than conquerors. Through Christ Jesus, because God has designed us to prosper and to triumph over all the works of the enemy. And so I want to breathe afresh upon you today, children of God. That you tap in, that you seek God, that you surrender your mind, your will, your situation, your circumstances to God. Being aware that your current situation is not your final situation. Your current circumstances are not your final circumstances. Your present moment is not your final moment. That God wants to move us from faith to faith, from grace to grace, from glory to glory. All by his design. And we got, have countless examples all throughout scriptures. I've just given you two and perhaps three if you include the example of Jesus. We talked about Gideon from the book of Judges. We talked about Peter. How Jesus knew that Peter had a zeal for God, but it was misplaced. And that but one day once he is strengthened, he would strengthen his brethren. And I want you to know, children of God, I don't know 
what may be going on or wrong in your life today, I want you to know that you can rely on God's power. You can rely on that gift, that precious gift of the Holy Spirit, the same gift that fell on Pentecost, the same spirit that birthed Jesus in Mary's womb, the same spirit that came upon Jesus when he was baptized by John the Baptist and dove came down upon him, the cloving tongues of fire and the mighty rushing wind in the day of Pentecost, the very same spirit, the Holy Spirit, is available to work in, around, and through us to lead us into God's design. Hallelujah. Someone says, God has a purpose for my life. God has designed my life. He has a design for my life. He's already prearranged and or preordained certain things that we should walk in them. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, there's a scripture that says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works that he has prepared in advance for us to do. That means that God has already designed your victory, saints of God. He's already designed the moment of your breakthrough. He's designed your victory over the enemy even right now. Hallelujah. So let us rejoice in, in knowing. Let us rejoice in, in, in hearing. Let us rejoice in learning of the, of the purpose and the design that God has for us as individuals and for the body of Christ as a whole. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. So let us let us take a moment now to just rejoice and, and, and worship him in spirit and in truth. Thanking him for his marvelous plan. His marvelous design that he has for our lives. Hallelujah Father we bless you. We praise you. We exalt you. We humble ourselves before your presence even now. Surrendering our minds, surrendering our will, surrendering our situations and circumstances, and we put it all before you, Father. You take it, you bless it, hallelujah, Father, and turn it around to fit your purpose for our life, to fit the design for which you have made us. And we know that we shall gain victory through Jesus Christ in every situation and circumstance. For we have already been made victorious through the precious blood of Jesus who purchased our salvation. Now, God, thank you for the empowerment of this Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. Stir up this gift afresh, even now, in each person under the sound and hearing of my voice, that they may be led, that they may be guided, that they may be directed into your perfect will concerning them. And we thank you in advance, Father. We say hallelujah. We bless you. We exalt you. Acknowledge you as sovereign, as Lord, our Savior, and our King. So today, Father, thank you. Thank you for your precious gift for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for not abandoning us. Thank you for having angels encamped around us. Thank you, Lord, for healing and providing and, 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 and encouraging us when we're feeling down. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That, thank you for the plan. Thank you for the purpose. And I thank you for the design that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.